Every week, our crew heads out in search of valuable antique treasures. This week, we spent two days in two different locations. The first location is an old mining camp. The second is an old town dump that was used from 1880 all the way up until 1910. Let's see what we can find. Morning. Look at this guy, man. <laughs> we finally got to get together. I was supposed to be on a date weekend, but I have a wonderful wife who let me come out call, and hang out and dig today. And check out these first finds out of the gate. Michael just pulled out a complete miner's lantern. And you can see where they would have put the carbide in the top right there. Miner's tag to go with it. There's a miner's tag that came out. We're on the miner's relics, which is cool. But you know, while we're here, we're here for the old glass. And look at the first hutch that just came out. It's whole, but holy cow with the melt on it. That thing has been warped, still has a stopper in it. But these warp bottles, believe it or not, people like them a whole lot. They're super cool that they were able to survive over 120 years, but it's even cooler that they were able to survive a fire that was hot enough to melt it without it cracking. So we're on the hutches. We're on the cool stuff. Let's keep it going. Oh, and that one's got the double stamped A on the bottom. Did y'all notice that? I did. Yeah. That's super cool. All right, let's get to it. Let me look right here, guys. These are one of the most difficult bottles to find without damage. No, I don't think it has a crack, dude. Put that down. Is that reflect? They don't matter out here. I don't see. No, it does in the back. Oh, right there. <laughs> no, it's not. It's right there too. Oh, is, oh yeah. Still would display great. These, I mean, I know this sounds crazy, but even with damage, this is a an incredibly tough bottle. Uh, if you saw a video a few weeks ago where I showed part of my collection talking about Alabama Bottling Company, this was one of their deco style bottles. Randy just pulled this one out. This is a nice Buffalo Rock, a 10 pin style or a bowling pin style bottle. Sadly, this glass is another one that just cracks and you can see that this one's flashed all up. But we're on the sodas, guys. That's always a good sign. Looks like it's gonna be a slick. It's gonna be a slick. We hope not, but you never know. It's yep. a slick. <laughs> That's a slick. He puts me on bottles and they're slicks. <laughs> the meds out here are hard to come by, I will say that. Just got this one, gross, tasteless, chill tonic. We dig these pretty often. They're pretty common. You can see it says Paris Medicine Company, St. Louis. So a nice Missouri bottle that was mass produced by the thousands. So again, it's not rare, but it is embossed and it's not worth a ton of money, but we are definitely not gonna leave it out here. It's coming out with us. Tristan's got him a mug base hutch. What is it? On, but Galesburg Bottling Works, a Davis Galesburg, Mississippi. Cool. Here's an up close shot of that bottle. Galesburg Bottling Works, A. Davis Proprietors, Galesburg, Illinois. It's got issues, but we, we've we never found an Illinois hutch down here. Got a D on the bottom. I would have thought that was an elephant with a D on the bottom. Cool. Yeah, that's crazy. Wish that would have been whole. I might be able to get it without the phone wall. Hold up. Look at this. She's got a hutch down there. Lean back just a little bit. Let me zoom in where they can see it. Look at that. That's just as pretty as it can be. Be an Indian. Please. Be an Indian. Yeah, she's got a hutch over here. It's a mug base. Oh, she got an Alabama bottling. No? Alabama. Bottling company mug base, Birmingham. Yep. yep. She got her one of the Alabama mug bases. Well, I've never dug one of those, baby. You got one on me. Yep. Heck yeah. How's it look? Perfect. Can't hold it up where the camera can see it. I'm sorry, I was checking it out. Here we go. I'm going to zoom in where they can see it a little bit better. Look yeah. is perfect. The bug heals perfect. Here you go. Hold it it's still got for a, a second. Where we can see the... Look at that. Alabama Bottling Company. Just like that warp one. The hole. We'll take it. Check it out. Tristan just pulled this out of their hole. Five gallon. You can see it says Indiana in the number five. Most of it may be there where we can piece it back together. We're just going to have to see. Oh, there it is. I bet you that's a bitters. Hostetters. No yep. Way. Nope. What is that? Jenkins, Jenkins stomach bitters. Jenkins stomach bitters. I've never seen one of those. No uh, this, this is a good one. That's yeah. probably pretty daggum rare, yeah, huh? Yeah, it's, it's probably $100 plus. James went home and did a little bit of research on that bottle because he hadn't seen one in a long time. Come to find out, the last two that sold were back during the 1990s. The first one sold for just over $400. The second one sold for over $800. He thought he had one of the J Foxes like I got. Take a look at that. Right there, it's one of the Joss A Magnus. And that's one of the fancy ones though. We find a lot of those flash, but I don't think we've ever found one that size. 
super cool. So the paper labels are surviving in here. You always wonder what these things say on them whenever they don't have anything embossed on them. This one was called Pergort. And that is probably one of the better labels that we found this year so far. It says it contains something. I can't tell what. It says two drops. So I guess it was administered in drops. That's an interesting bottle regardless. It's very hard to preserve these paper labels. A lot of people ask me. The only way that I know how is to spray a thin coat of clear coat right over top of it while the bottle's dirty. If you try to clean it, usually it just disintegrates. And as this thing dries, it will disintegrate. So without having clear coat with you while you're at the dump, more than likely, there's no way to get this thing out of here. Andy Carter dug this hole and let Clayton get down in there to wreck the hole and widen it out. And look at there, he pulled out a Cherokee. That's a nice looking Cherokee. That's a good six and a half ounce. Probably single use. Yeah, Birmingham. Not a very expensive bottle, very common. However, when you're digging a big hole, you got to look for the, the good stuff. <laughs> you got to be excited about whatever you find. We'll take it. It's a 1915 variant, so probably between 1915 and 1920 is the layer at the very bottom. Aww. Clayton just pulled this out. What do you got? Coca-Cola? She, she got a straight side coat. Nice. Basically. It's got a heel on the chip. I mean, a tip in the heel. <laughs> it's got a heel on the chip. She's only a little bit dyslexic. <laughs> a lot dyslexic. But Clayton got a nice underlay gold lid, and, and now she's, pretty curse of on the she's got, where's the, oh, a little bitty chip. That's not bad. Let's wipe it off where y'all can see it. Nice shoulder script. And you can see right there, it's from Birmingham. It's pretty well worn, at least on the heel. But the lip's in decent shape. One little bit of heel chip. We'll take it. Check this out. I just saw it sticking out. Oh, that's different. I got one I needed, dude. Holy crap. I'm scared to break it up. It's bad glass. It's on eBay. It was on eBay. I'll give you that hint. Oh, bro. No way. It's got a flash. This is a very, very, very tough. I've only ever seen three. And it's whole. Two of them had damage. Birmingham Coca Cola Circle Slug. That's awesome. Very, very rare. It's crap. They don't matter with this glass. It's like 1917 to like 1920. Very short brown bottle. In that crack right there, this is still probably one of the best condition ones I've seen with a single crack. Most of the time, these things have hundreds of cracks. Well, there you go, baby. You found a good one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I hate it's cracked. It ain't like your hutch and perfect and all. But oh, it's I, a good bottle. I guess I'll take it. I mean, that's a great bottle, man. I, I don't have one in my collection even damaged. So I almost bought one on eBay here a while back for 30 bucks. It was just in, like, sh just shambles. I mean, it had cracks everywhere. Much like a shattered window. Well, yeah. We'll take it. We'll take it. Hey guys, now's the time I'm going to ask you. Please reach right down there and hit that subscribe button. It'll mean more than you know. It'll help support our channel and family. Let's get right back to the video. So we always get questions when we did big, big holes like this about how long it takes. So this hole right here that we're in is about four and a half foot deep. It's about a four and a half foot circumference. I dug this by myself in three hours. Miranda does the ash layer on the bottom. And then once she gets through, I get in and dig it out more. So this is a single person hole, three hours worth of work. Just to give y'all an idea. Oh, check it out. she got a lantern piece right there. The little wick, the uh, turner on it still. That'll probably have something stamped on the wick turner. Oh. We're all in a line. You can see Clayton, well, maybe right there. Miranda's right here. And then Michael's on down over there. Miranda just pulled out this snuff jar. And I was going to tell y'all about it. So when you pull out a snuff jar, you can look on the bottom. And the amount of dots that are there had to do with the strength of the snuff. So like a single dot was not as strong as a triple dot, obviously. Kind of interesting. Look at this right here. Miranda just pulled this out. It says Pride of Long Island brand. And then it says Tomato Catsup. <laughs> kind of hate that one's broken. You don't film a lot of ketchups, but that's an interesting one. Miranda is at it again. She just spotted a small. It looks like she's got a coin. Can you see anything on it? I know y'all going to get mad at me for rubbing it. It's not silver. You're okay to rub it. <laughs> no, I can't get nothing on it. There you go. I'll get it and I'll it clean it off. It's a nickel size. It does look like a nickel. We'll find out. So the coin that Miranda found was a buffalo nickel and it is a 1916. You can barely make it out. And here's one of those miners tags after cleaning it up. You can see a little bit of the brass through. All I did was soak these in CLR overnight. Again, these are not going to be pristine after being burnt for many, many years within the dump. But it does give us a good age bracket, which we kind of knew. 
You can see the buffalo a lot better on this side. So a 1916 buffalo nickel. Look at how it's sitting, guys, right out of the top. Huh? 1915. Let's see. That's different. St. Louis, Missouri. That's odd. It's got some flashing going on anyways. That sucks. That was up pretty high. I should have known it was going to be a newer bottle. So I don't know if y'all can see that right there. That is a token imprint. And that is what you call a nightmare when you have a hole this big and you know there's a token in there someplace. <laughs> All that we can see is like a one and a zero in the imprint. It was at this point right here that I realized I had messed up. We found three miners tags, two miners lanterns, and a buffalo nickel, and then we couldn't find this token. If I'd have had my metal detector, we would have been able to find it. That being said, we're going to day two right now in a new dump, and this time we're gonna bring the metal detector. All right, so while we're digging, I am taking the AT Max, running over top of all these spoil piles. Obviously there's a lot of iron and stuff in here like that right there that I just kicked out. I'm listening for the really, really high squeak. And it sounds terrible. I know it's scratchy, but when you're dealing in as much rust as what we're dealing with right here, it's always worth checking those squeaks out. So let's see what that is. It was just a pour spout. For those of you that are not familiar with the Garrett AT Max, what happens is when you get a larger iron target like this one, it will sound really good. Most of the time you can pinpoint and you can tell if something's gonna to be too big to be like a coin or a token. But when you're dealing with the rust and iron, like I said before, you can't pinpoint as well. And you just have to dig all the targets to make sure. So check it out. The first stencil jug that we've got out here other than the minis and James pulled it. Congratulations. I know that's the most common probably stencil jug from Birmingham, isn't it? Yeah. But we've never it's dug always, one. It's always good to dig one. Well, I was gonna say we've never dug one on the channel except for the Bessemer Liquor Company that we got. So, Doster Northington Drug Company, Birmingham, Alabama. You have seen us find the druggist, but never the whiskey jug. And guess what, the handle's there. So congratulations on that one, James. Just rake this little guy out right here. It was a scratchy signal, but it looks like a keyhole to me. I don't know what that is. Maybe it went to the front of a lock or maybe even a dresser drawer. Looks like it's made out of brass. Super cool. Cool. Almost time to start metal detecting for just again, for just a second. But Tristan just pulled this out. Call your drug company, the Rexall Drug Store, Birmingham, Alabama. Beautiful. This is a little smaller than the last one y'all saw filmed. Ours had some kind of white junk that I think was leftovers from the medicine being in it. But that's got great embossing on it. Cool. That's awesome, man. Time to metal detect these spool files though and see what kind of coins we threw out. Randy just pulled this jar out. Helms Railroad Mills. Still had the lid on it. This would have been snuff. And this is a bottle that I've actually wanted to dig for a long time and I personally have not been able to yet. It's common for some folks to find, but not for us. So great find, Randy. Check this out. Tristan just pulled this out. This is the smallest Dr. King's bottle that I've ever seen. New Discovery, you can see on this side it says Chicago, Illinois. On the other side, it looks like it says H.E. Bulklin & Co. We've never found this variant for, for sure. Maybe more common up north, but down here in the south, that's the first for us. All right, Tristan's in the hole and he just pulled out another Collier, different variant. Look how pretty the Birmingham Alabama just a little is. Bit smaller than the other one. Yeah, it is, but it's perfect. And it doesn't say Rexall. No, I don't. No, say Rexall. and don't say Rexall. Lip is good. Cute little drug. Let's go. So right over here to the side, I just kicked the dirt back because I heard a signal, and if it was on the surface, I wanted to know. Maybe about a 75. Kind of pinpoint and small. And target number two was just a glass fuse. So I don't have too many more spools piles to go over top of, and then we're gonna dig, and then I'm gonna metal detect a little bit more. Can you see it? Kind of beat up. But it is a swirl, isn't it? Yep. Wow, heck yeah. Check this out, guys. I just slung this out. That's probably one of the coolest stoppers I've ever found. Is it clear and ruby? I can't tell. It's got like red underlayment in it, it looks like. Wow, that thing's fancy. It's got a little nick out of it on this side. But that's a cool stopper, guys. So I just had a, another target that was really banging. And this right here appears to be copper. And I don't know if it was just like a type of hose clamp or what. Still not a token or a coin, so I guess it's time to dig a little bit more. We got more spools to go after with the metal detector. Looks like Tristan's got a bottle down here. 
Oh, oh straight side coat. Yeah. That's yeah. a good cutter though. Yeah. Be a good whiskey glass. Mm -hmm. Gotta look at the upside, right? That's right. That's a different kind of clasp than I've ever seen. It was definitely a two piece. I don't know if that was for jewelry or if that was for like maybe a belt. I don't know. Y'all drop in the comments below. Your second hutch of the day and your first time ever digging hutches, right? That's it. That's it. Look at that beauty right there, guys. That's a nice hundred dollar hutch right there. There's two, well, three variations. There's a crown top. There's this variant and there's one that's got a slug plate that goes all the way around it. The slug plate is the rarest. This one's right in the middle. So Sweet. not bad, man. That thing looks like it's in phenomenal shape too. Congratulations. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Looky what Clayton threw out. Without the detector though, I would not have heard it because it had a layer of dirt on it right in his shovel full. Look at that beautiful pocket watch. Golly, you see that white wire embedded on the back? Yeah. Holy cow, man. That's actually a good looking one, dude. Oh, yeah, that's that's gonna clean up good, man. Pocket, pocket watch. Check that's that great. thing out. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> Finally got me and Emball Smith out of here. It's gonna be a Baines from Woodlawn. There we go, we'll take it. Been a few weeks since I found one of these guys. Absolutely fun bottle to find, without a doubt. Doesn't look like it's got any issues either. Take a look at this little guy right here. That is probably the smallest jug I've ever seen, or a vase. You can see it's missing the handle. But holy cow, guys, out of the bottom of the hole, it's almost got like a Bennington marble color to it with that brown glaze. That's a really cool find. That'd be one worth putting the handle back on, even though it doesn't say anything, just because of how small it is. Tristan just pulled this LB Coley Druggist Alexander City out. Another amazing little chemist bottle or druggist bottle. These are always fun to find. I like the ones that are smaller. Forgot my gloves today, and I'll be dang, I wore a blister already. Just shows you my hands are getting soft. I got to start digging without gloves again. But for everybody in the comments getting on to me, they made my hands get soft. <laughs> Let's keep going. Clayton pulled this one out too. This is one of the Dr. H.S. Thatcher's, but it's a little bit different than the one that we typically find. They're all from Chattanooga, but this one says cholera mixture. A lot of times I think it's worm tonic and like different things like that. That's a nice little amber keeper for sure. Be new though. Yeah. Does it come out of the top? No. Look at that. You got an eagle on both sides. An eagle on both sides. It could be new. We're running into some 60s stuff and 70s towards the top all of a sudden, but I don't know. Miranda finally got on one. That's a Jacobs Pharmacy from Birmingham, Alabama. And I'll have to get her to hand it up to me where y'all can see it. That is pretty. But Jacobs is that pharmacy that is connected to Coca-Cola. So check that out, guys. That's a nice one. That's the earlier variant, too. One shovel after you were in here. One shovel after I got out. That's all right. Still goes home with us. A little bit of husband and wife competition never hurt anybody though nice babe good job got a few spoons a fork looks like a piece to a lantern nothing terrific in the spools today so i guess we're about to focus in for metal detecting back to just bottle digging let's see what we can come up with zach pulled one of the coolest bottles we've ever found out this thing right here is super cool the whole thing is around including the bottom let's look at the very bottom of it and it would not have sat up and that thing is amazing, man. Congratulations on that. Triangle in a circle. She just pulled a net out. It's got an interesting on logo on the back. It says Grand Union Company. ETA in the center of that triangle. Let's look at it. Grand Union Company, ETA. And then on the side, it says... Grand Union Company. <laughs> and on the other side it says Grand Union Company. Nope, Grand Union Tea Company. That was tea? Yeah, that was tea. Well, it was uh all these tea and coffee companies made all sold all kind of spices and stuff like that as a general rule. And extracts and Ooh, that makes sense. That nature. It grew out of uh these uh dry good stores and stuff like that that dealt with uh bulk stuff yeah. i don't think we've ever dug one of these you think you remember digging any in the yeah, past I, i've dug those quite a few huh. that's cool hey everyone i hope that you enjoyed today's video we had an absolute blast filming it if you can't tell my eyes are a little swollen up and that's because i got into a bad batch of poison ivy so i'm gonna have to stay out of the woods and hopefully we'll be back in the river next week we'll see you guys in that adventure